Hello, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Larktober and I go by Lark, and welcome to this gold farm tutorial, I guess. So, there are many places you can get gold information on how to build the best gold farm, how how gold farms work, etc, etc, and this will not be explaining any of those details, there are many other resources that you can go watch and many other videos that are talking about gold optimizations, and so this, this is not this video, this is specifically about this gold farm. I believe Nico is lost. It has a great video explanation, so you go check, you go check that out. I know Strom talks about it a lot. Il Mango talks about it a lot. So there's pl plenty of the resources. So this is not the place for that. That is just a disclaimer. So what got me into this project on trying to build a new and fastest gold farm, single dimensional gold farm, it was I started a hardcore Minecraft world and I wanted to do a YouTube style let's play on it and I want to make it unique because a lot of people do hardcore videos and so I decided to do a totemless amplified hardcore series and so in order to do that I had to set some rules and one thing that I set in place was that I did not want to use the roof to build a gold farm or to build any farm in the nether and so it led me to working on a perimeter and to how I got here today. This is a different world this is not the hardcore world just for the record. and. I, when looking at, at gold farms, yes, I could do El Mango's Donut. Yes, I could do Nembom's uh, ring-shaped design where the pigment drop onto honey blocks or hay bales and then they die or you can loot them. I don't want to do any of those. I wanted to do my own unique design and this design was inspired, as you probably can tell, by two, two people really and that is Il Mango's gold farm, the conveyor style gold farm show, sh that is showcased in season two of Psycraft, but also it is inspired by Strom's whiskey train where mobs are picked up in minecarts and then they're brought to a centralized killing chamber so the and so I combined their two ideas along with some help advice and stuff from Dave Guy who actually helped Strom in his whiskey train design so thank you all three of you for that and you should definitely check out all three of them. So what makes this farm unique is that rather than having giant spawn platforms close to the player, they are all spread out as almost as low as possible, but within a reasonable distance to the player. It kind of maximizes the despawn sphere. And so what happens is the pigments spawn on the magma blocks. They see the turtle eggs that are located in between the trap doors and they move to them. And then as they are actively moving, they can be readily picked up in the next available minecart once they get close enough in proximity. One of the biggest struggles that I had to deal with was this section right here where the eggs are located. And the minecarts drop a block and then they come back up a block because if we do not have a trap door beneath the eggs, so they're just hovering and the minecart rail is flush, the pigmen gets stuck on a about a half a block away from the trapdoors and they don't actively move because they can't physically pass find any closer to the eggs and so one of the requirements is that mobs have to be moving in order to be picked up by a minecart and that's something that i had to face and learn and something that was talked about in other videos as well and by not having those trap doors that or having those bottom trap doors and that rail dipping down we decrease our rate significantly so after the pigments spawn and they're picked up in the minecarts, they are brought to the centralized killing chamber and then they are all deposited into two killing locations and then a player with a looting sword attacks an armor stand. You can see Steve. Thank you, Steve, for all your help as well in this process. Attacks an armor stand and with Swooping Edge, they are able to be slain and then the drops are then picked up by rapidly dispensed hopper minecarts onto this instant breaking method discovered in 119 with the implementation of our hopper minecart sticking together and then the items are dropped and accumulated actually they're aligned on two different sides of the ice ice ra rail i guess is what it's called and then here they'd be typically burned but i am actually just doing hopper in the hopper counters with carpet mod so one of the greatest challenges that i face so we're currently at a tick rate of two right now and so the minecarts are going to look funky and stuff like that. But in order for mobs to wrap around this corner and be deposited in the kill chamber, a minecart on top and bottom has to be perfectly timed 
so that they reach the chamber or these activator at exactly the correct moment. If they don't reach them at the, exactly the same moment right here, we can see an example right here of them reaching them at the same moment. So once they hit the activator rail, they are both tossed into the centralized killing chamber. Without the precise timing where the mine carts on the top and bottom rails are at the same time, if a pigman gets if a pigman on the bottom gets there before the top mine cart, it can actually back up the entire rail and so the top rail will also back up the bottom rail and so then you just have a bunch of mine carts that get backed up into the system and there's a weird mechanic where they get snapped all together so you can have like 30 mine carts on a single block and that is just a lot of lag and stuff like that. You can also see that this farm is definitely not pre precise because the way the the mobs come around here is that they can be murdered one hit when they're still leaving the minecart and then their swords drop. They don't typically drop gold ingots or nuggets, which is fine. But so this is not a 100% lossless design as well. Okay, so now that I have kind of showcased how mobs get from point A to point B, it's time to stop the farm to kind of walk through a few of the most important parts of it and then to tell you how to get a hold of the schematics. Or there are three important things to consider when building this farm. And the first is we do not want any regular rails in this design. We don't want curved rails because a curved rail can back up. And so we want them to have the ability to keep moving. And so they also keep their momentum when they're on straight rails. So if they are on a curved rail, the cart can sometimes collide with the block on the corner to power it. And so we always want to have a rail like snapped like this because this helps keep the momentum on this downward rail. And so in order to do this, I'm just going to break this and show you. In order to do this, we want to place this rail first and then you can place this rail because it's, if you place this rail after the fact, it's going to snap sideways or it's just going to snap downward like that. And so we want to snap this rail up and then we can come in and place this rail. Then when you're done, you break this rail and place it up top. So because we are using a six game tick clock for dispensing the minecarts out of the dispensers down here in order to keep up with the flow of mobs, we have to have a hopper minecart aligned over two hoppers in order to absorb the minecarts that are broken by the lava cauldrons because hoppers only process items at eight game ticks and we're pressing minecarts at six game ticks. So in order to do that, you first need to put your rail here and your hopper minecart there along with some partial, partial block. And a partial block would be like a cobblestone wall, a fence, an iron bar, or a glass pane. And so essentially what you do is you push the minecart into that partial block so that it is over aligned over both of them. And we want it to be essentially be in the center, which is why a glass pane or an iron bar would be better than a birch fence or a cobblestone wall. In my original, in the design I built on my hardcore world, a wall works perfectly fine as well. And I have no minecart losses. And then once you're done, you break the rail underneath the minecart. So you can just grab, you can just sneak down below and you can hit, see the hitbox just a little bit, break it, break the pane or whatever you use. So then you you build up a little thing. You want to put the glass here. So we need glass. Over there, you're going to place your pistons facing downward. And then you don't have to zero tick them or anything like that or one tick them. You can just place them like that. And once they're sandwiched, you can break the pistons and then go from there. And so your hopper mine carts are sandwiched in the glass. And as long as you align them with the rail and the wall, you cannot bump into them or anything like that to get them off. So I'm going to show you the proper way on how to get these rails to look like this with this trapdoor, this trapdoor, and this trapdoor open so these rails are hovering. Because if these rails are not open when a baby pigman comes in on in a hopper minecart, if when it hits his activator rail, rather than teleporting to the Sea lantern right there, they will pop out on these three locations, even if there's a block above it. Because Minecraft and doesn't understand the, the logic of this being two pixels or three pixels tall and a Pikmin being larger than a block. Or maybe Pikmin being larger than a block when it's on top of that. 
because logic. So what you'll need to do is you will need to have all these spots available on both sides. And you can do this. I did this in my hardcore world and I had no problems, but I've also done this a bajillion times because every time I updated it, it would break. And so you want to work on the lower rail first. So you'll start at this cauldron right here. You'll place your trap door, your rails in these three spots. Up here, you'll want to place your activator rail. The activator rails are always touching this redstone block and this redstone block. In order to snap it and to help you in the future, you need to reach under here or reach up here, break this glass block and place a rail up there. And that's gonna help keep this aligned. So once this is aligned upwards, you can go ahead and place this powered rail right here and it will snap in the direction it needs it without affecting this rail. Same thing on the other side. Powered rail, powered rail, activator rail, and you're good to go. Plus this. But don't up to open any trap doors yet and don't remove that until the second to last step. The next step is to do is to do the top line. And so you're gonna to wanna to remove this glass block, place a temporary block or a temporary rail, do your activator rail, and then do your powered rail, powered rail. And it's important you do this power rail first before this rail, otherwise you have the opportunity of this rail snapping in a different direction and it just makes it complicated. And we'll place the rail here, rail here, and then rail here. And so the side is completed, so we can go ahead and place that powered rail there. And on the side, we're going to place our activator rail there. Powered rail here, powered rail there, power rail there, so that this doesn't snap up. This will be a common problem as well, is that this one will snap up if you don't place this one up here first. And then you can finish it up with this, this, and this. You need to make sure that you have all of these rails up here make sure everything is aligned so open your schematic go up to the top make sure that only those trap doors are open but all the rails are in line properly and you want to want to come to the top of the farm reach down here there'll be a glass block right here break this glass pane or glass block reach down here break that rail place a glass block there that one may that rail down there may or may not be snapped upward depending on the server and stuff like that and then up here, you want to do the same thing. Break that rail, place a, a block there, and then place your block there, and then the chamber is done. So in the event that you're building this and you accidentally break this powered rail and it's or it snaps up, what you're going, going to want to do is you're going to want to break this rail and then replace this rail. And then you can place this rail here and it will snap properly. So once you get all the rails placed in, what you can do is there is a black stained glass path that I put along here that is completely optional, but it will definitely help you out in doing a few different things, is you need to come up here and open the rail. So come over here to the piston, place three blocks on top of the piston, and you can reach this trap door, you can open it, you can reach this trap door right above it and open it, and you can reach this trap door right here, and you're gonna break these three blocks, and you're gonna come over here, and underneath this concrete, or adjacent to this concrete on the black stained glass, you're going to pull up three. You're going to open this trap door. You're going to come over here and you're going to open this trap door. And you're going to reach around here and you're going to open this one. So I just crouched over here. And then you can break these three. And that is how you align the rails and open the trap doors. And the same is on this side as well. You may have a problem with this rail right here, depending on the orientation, but I do not suggest rotating the farm. I did not test the farm in a different orientation, so I would highly encourage you to do some creative testing first before rotating it, but it's essentially the same design, just the farm. I would, But I would feel comfortable telling you to mirror it though, so you can mirror it up in exactly 180 degrees. On the back of this farm, where the killing chamber is, you have your minecart start, and you also have your collection system start. Well, if you take these ladders down, you can access the chests that you need to fill up with minecarts and also hopper minecarts. So, each of these each of these lines right here, we need to fill up these three hoppers and this dispenser. This chest, these two, this chest, these two hoppers and this chest right here. So, it's essentially filling three full chests plus all the hoppers that connect them. So, Essentially, it's about 117 blocks 
per line. And so what you want to do is you want to look in here. You want to fill this up right here all the way up. And if you're ever uncertain, you can always turn on Lightmatica. And make sure you're in full render mode. So I'm going to render all. So set layer mode to all. And you can hover, use the I key. And you can look to see if that chest has anything in it. So the left is what is in the schematic. The right is what is in your world. And this only works in a single player world. If you're on a server, you will not get the right view. So you just have to open it and look. You can see here, there's nothing in here. There's nothing in here. Same thing over here. This is full a little bit here, but there's nothing in here, nothing in here. And we just need a little buffer in here just in case you have a few extra rail or a few extra minecarts get stuck. And then right here, you can where these these bamboo hanging signs are at. This hop, this dropper right here needs to have nine hopper minecart minecarts in it, as you can see here. It actually only has eight. That is because we actually have one that moved up here by def default, but you need nine hopper minecarts on this side, and actually the same thing applies to that side as well. So you need nine hopper minecarts here, and then these two chests are just like those ones over here, except there's an extra set of chests over here. Pushai, this is full. That dispen or that hopper is not. That hopper has nothing in it. This one is full. These hoppers do not. The only other thing to note is this Etho hopper clock back here. It has eight items in it. And so you can use any eight items you want that stack up to 64 is i have three sets of glass types in this so i have the white stained glass for the skirt which is completely optional and that is both on the 6k version and the 8k version the black stained glass that i have here is necessary to prevent pikmin from wandering towards the player and break any mine carts and stuff like that and then the and then the sting, the regular glass up here is what is necessary to keep the chamber safe and to keep pigment from teleporting to places you don't want them to teleport when they leave the activator rails or when they hit the activator rails in the minecarts. These bamboo signs, these glass blocks down here that are holding the bamboo signs and this black stained glass right here is completely optional along with these ladders, but these ladders do help to do any maintenance you need to do to help to place the trap doors and also to stock your hopper minecarts in that location as well. So the final two notes is that one, there is no collection system. So all the drops are aligned on burnt and burnt. So essentially you can extend this up to like 20 blocks that way to build your storage, which I'm not suggesting any storage. It is completely up to you. And the last thing you might want to consider is lowering the farm a single block where it is just a single bedrock block then great you can just replace the lever the you can place the lever as is but in the event you have multiple like this you can always reach under and you might have to move your lever position to be under here or place it over here as well to keep everything powered you just kind of have to be a little creative with your lever placement with how the bedrock goes you can always place it on the side of the blocks as well it's just kind of funky but just make sure when you go to place your schematic the first time, if you're building it on top of bedrock, lower the schematic to where you think it should go and free cam or go to every single location where the rail dips and make sure that you can get it to align properly. I do say that it is difficult to put a storage in if you do not, if you lower it a block. So you probably want to know where do I build the farm? What version of the farm do I want? And so the first thing to note is that I did a bunch of testing on this on my desktop and also my laptop. And so it's important to note that all of the rates that I will be talking about is for when the farm is 100% in another waste bioma. I had s someone on Twitch, Dr. Jankovic, uh, build the farm for me on his stream just so that I could see any flaws with it, maybe s better instructions for you, which you'll see, which you probably could have seen in the video. And, but he, he forgot that needs to be in another waste biome. And his is in the Crimson Forest. We still get drops, but it's not the best design. It's not, it's not designed for a Crimson Forest because you don't want to compete with other mobs. You want to maximize your zombie pigment spawning. So the first question you got to ask is where do you want to build the farm? Do you want to build the farm at build height? Do you want to build it in a perimeter under the roof or do you want to build it in a perimeter with no roof important that's the most important question to ask is which location do you want to build it and so one of the coolest things that we saw is we're going to start with the greatest rates of course is that if we built it in a perimeter with no roof 
Essentially, the drops do not change, so we average at about 100, 180,000 drops per hour with essentially 1,340, 1,360 blocks of gold per hour. But the best rate is actually for the 6,000 magma block schematic without a skirt. So this is this side has the skirts and this side does not have the skirts. And so this is the greatest producing farm out of all these designs. And I'm not gonna go into explanations why this is. Uh, it's mainly to do with mob movement and some things to do with spawn mechanics, but that's something that I don't wanna talk about because it's not clear to me exactly. And yeah. So if you're gonna build it in a perimeter, but you are not allowed to like break bedrock roof or you don't wanna go into the effort of breaking the bedrock roof, which is what I'm doing in my hardcore world because I'm gonna we're gonna get ample drops enough, so we can see that essentially they all have the same um, drop rate, which is which is a peculiar in in instance, and so essentially we're running at mob capacity or at mob max mob cap right now in this, and yeah, so it doesn't really matter what farm design you would do. I would recommend doing the 6K again with no skirt in this case because. You're not going to, it's the, the 10,000 or 14,000 extra stained glass blocks you need to spawn proof it or to make a skirt is not worth the effort if you're going to get the same rates. And actually, if you build like, hey, you might get a little less, but you would need to do more testing in your specific location as well. And so the last time, the last location and why this farm is still technically the fastest gold farm at build height is because we can get in this instance we can get a drastic rate so we can go all the way from 114,000 all the way up to 156,000 total drops and making this the fastest design at the top of the world which is up there and so yeah so but that's the 8,000 magma blocks with the spawning skirt so the 14,000 extra blocks and it might not seem like a lot but there's like 2,000 or 4,000 stained glass difference between these and you get 12,000 more drops per hour or about 80 more blocks per hour compared to if you don't use that skirt like you're only going to get 114 or 138,000 total drops and so this is just due to needing that extra spawn skirt because at world height the mob generation and mob spawning is drastically lower than it was at the bottom of the world and so this actually if it is at Y to 56 essentially. This is if it is at Y6 in this testing and this is also if this is at Y6 as well. So yeah, so I hope this will help you make an informed decision and I will put this at the very end so you can stare at it or you can just take a screenshot and contemplate what you want to do with it. So if you haven't noticed, this is my first tutorial and there are probably some mistakes and some weird cuts and stuff like that, and I apologize. I'm still new to the editing and everything like that, and I hope that you don't take away from that in the farm because the farm is truly a powerhouse for a single dimensional gold farm, and it will definitely get you all the gold you could ever ask for. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment with your question, join my Discord, and ask a question there. And yeah. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial or this little explanation on how the farm works. If anyone wants to do a block to block, bo block by block tutorial, feel free to reach out and I'll be more than happy to link your video in the description. But until then, I hope you have a fantastic time zone wherever you are and happy crafting.